What's up, everybody? It's your boy Showtime Doctor. Uh, this is going to be your Spiral of Destiny guide. <laughs> now, if you are someone who does not like gotcha, uh, maybe more of a free to play player, or for whatever reason you like standalone at roguelike kind of experiences, this is the mode for you. Completely separate almost from everything else you had going on, with the exception of you can take three characters from the other mode into this game that's why i say when you start spiral destiny it's going to give you like a little tutorial and stuff don't go right away if you can help it um wait around farm as much currency run out of energy the first day on your account which you can buy energy by the way up to four times with premium currency should you wish um and see if you can pull one of the banner units or pull someone that's really strong or get more educated on characters so you can bring those characters rather than because i would love to bring some of the characters that i didn't get to bring because i just went right straight away when i started the account yeah, i've done my mercenary groups 41. um when you first get in here there's a currency key of destiny you use that to unlock every chapter you can choose to abandon your progress which is right behind me on the screen and you go back and you reselect characters and you start over from a designated choke point uh, if you wish to. And over here on this path, this thing has its own level up process. So as you finish and get points, and this is the currency up here, Astral Tier, uh, you're going to come and you're going to, you know, get more passive bonuses for your base, get more passive bonuses for your characters whole lot of stuff i can't even see i haven't gotten one point in this because i didn't finish a cycle because there's like i'm on like chapter six and i don't know how far it goes i think chapter six might be the last one the way the story's going but these are nodes and stuff that you know i'll have a separate video on once i start unlocking and recommending these i just want you to be aware that's what that is voyage map like i said you're going to go through the tutorial and all this stuff, and then Moment of Crisis is where you're going to start over in the past. You're going to do a little time dilation, and you're going to put proceed two chapters, and then you have to choose which faction you want to support. And depending on what you choose, you're going to go down that path. So this is the Union faction. That's who I chose. And you're going to keep going down that path until you eventually finish out. We're going to go ahead and jump right in here. Now, as far as uh, pay to win or whaling or anything, none of that really matters over here. Um, the only way that it matters a little bit is if you have really high level Uber characters from the other mode that you bring into this mode. And as far as I've seen, there's really nothing else going on, like pay, pay to win stuff that you can buy in this mode. So you might start playing the game, figure out gotcha is not your thing. Hey, I really like this mode though. It's kind of a roguelike thing, really enjoying it. So this is your base, base of operations when you eventually establish it after you get through all the first couple chapters. Uh, from here, you can do a great many things, but I'll go over the UI for you. Um, this little thing down here will take you to different places in the town. There's little crystal diamond shaped things that'll show you, oh, there's a new thing here. There'll be little like uh, dialogue boxes if there's someone to talk to that could potentially get you a reward or they'll make a request and you'll get a quest for a couple days or have to provide them a certain resource and all the different buildings i'll go over as soon as we're done going over the ui here uh, this is characters characters is a little bit differently in this one as you can see i brought over mytha stormbreaker and lash if i had that to do over again i'd probably do lash maybe mytha again mytha's not that good in this mode because you get your skills independently so she only comes over here with this and I think one skill, which was her leg slam at the time. Now, if I brought her when she was higher level, maybe she has more skills to use. But otherwise, all the other skills that you get are kind of RNG in this mode, which I'll show you how that works later. Gear, you just get gear. You don't upgrade the gear. Likewise, you don't upgrade the characters other than taking them with you for leveling and taking them to training fields, which is a whole other thing I'll show you. Uh, stamina? Every battle, your character loses 10 stamina. And if you if they die during the battle, they lose 40% stamina. So you really have to watch that. And they come in with whatever passive they had. 
So depending on the, the tier and the quality of the character you bring in here, they're going to be better. Otherwise, I also brought Lash and Stormbreaker. If I had it to do all over again, I probably wouldn't bring Mytha. I'd bring Lash because Lash has been really effective. Mytha's good. Don't get me wrong. Mytha's been good. I wouldn't bring Storm because there's just not that many opportunities with her movement for her to be in positions to do a bunch of big damage early. Once you get her more move speed and stuff, potentially that can change. But um, yeah, so in general, I probably would have brought Cole. And I would have brought Gloria, and I'd kick out Mytha and Stormbreaker, but that's just what happened, so... Just the way it goes. Um, and then you have your inventory, you can see here, this is stuff that you use to forge blueprints for weapons at the smithy. These are materials, this is something dumb that uh, <laughs> our local caster gave us. And then Broken Crucible, same thing. And these are all stuff you use to build the base or build certain things in the forge or whatever. And some of it's just like rando things that you can potentially sell. I'm keeping them in case they're useful somehow. And your gear is down here too. You'll get gear that drops and it'll be random. So you just have to choose who you want it to be on. Now obviously you see your gold right here. You ever want to go back to the other mode? That's the button to do it. You can go back and forth anytime. It's not going to cost you any extra keys. It only costs keys to unlock the chapters. And on the lower right, it will kind of alert you when there's stuff to do. Maybe you want to interact with them. Maybe you don't. That's up to you. Um, archive. You can come over here and it's going to tell you s stuff about the world and the events that you've done. So encyclopedia. That has knowledge about, you know, all this stuff, where you've been, what it does, different factions, that type of thing. If you get real immersed in the story, journal is literally your journal of what's happened. So you can actually go back, you edit it as you go along and you can make decisions of like, I trust this guy. I don't trust this guy. We, we're going to do this instead. We're going to help this person and not that person, this faction and not that faction. And you can kind of see what you wrote here. As you can see, I've had way more than a month in whatever week, so... I don't know what's going on on that title screen. And then notes. This is your actual journal and the stuff that actually has happened. So you can actually go back through and if you're really into storyline, this is the perfect way to catch up on things. You haven't played for a little bit. You want to catch up on the previous day or who was that character again click 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 now this is where you're going to be instigating all the battles and your dispatches so as you can see here there's an event battle that's a big story battle it doesn't happen every week but there's usually going to be either a choice to be made or something big you usually get some type of base upgrade or maybe an additional character something similar and then also there are regular quests, so you do one of these a week and you have to choose. So you choose based on how hard it is, what the rewards are. In this case, you get an epic defensive trinket, blueprint, you still have to go and make it and some gold. Uh, it is good to have a good supply of gold, at least have like, I would say 1500 spare gold at the end of every week if you can swing it. Because oftentimes there'll be a bunch of decisions that'll come up at the end of chapters like, oh, do we want to repair the mine? Uh, 500 gold and stuff like that. They just spring on you. Uh, this is one of the things used to forge weapons. Looks like dust. Inspiration of skills. So after the battle, it'll choose three characters in your party. And they will all get random skills that you look at and you choose one. So that's how you get skills in this game. You can also train skills, but that's primarily how you'll be getting skills for characters. Uh, what else here? There's different tiers. This is ingot. You use that to build things as well as weapons. And this is a facility upgrade. So there's facilities that like rest, smithing, buffing. And I'll show you about different ones. But these give like little multipliers to them. Or unlock different slots. So you can have an additional slot to do like forging, let's say. So two instead of one. And then also there is Dispatch. So Dispatch, you got to meet the requirements for it. Uh, these are early ones, so you can choose levels no less than one. 
okay, you can send like a lobby you never use, and he can go, and he's burning 10 stamina a week, but you're getting wood out of it or gold out of it or whatever it says. As you go through the game, the requirements get higher. Eventually, they want four people that are level 30. Well, at this point in the game, most of my characters are like 38, 35. So that's quite demanding, but every week you get a new trinket. So quite hard to do your first playthrough through, but eventually as you keep going through and getting all six of the endings, hey, this is going to be something you're going to want to be doing because you're getting more gear for it. And also you can go and look at the factions if you want. That's here for you. So you can look at who are you friendly with, who doesn't like you, who doesn't care about you. That's an explanation of the battle screen. And you go in and you have the battles, you place your units, it's all the same. It's just you only use these units that you recruit here and the three you brought along with you. And let's see here. So this button. These are the companions I brought. Just giving you information. And if you want, you can go back. You can get out of here. You can go view the remembrances. Every time you unlock a remembrance, it gives you a reward. So in this case, hope looks like... A frame for your profile picture, that type of thing. But these are potential spoilers. I'm going to try to get away from those for y'all that really like story. Story's been really good, by the way. Uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. And then, of course, you're, you know, you want to come, you want to mess with the graphic settings, whatever. That's all there. Now, as you go out through the menu, this is everything in your town. The hill, for the most part, there's just, like, uh, storyline things there. So, you have to go there sometimes to talk to people. That's how that is. Now, Sanctuary. This is a place that you come to bless certain units. So, you come over here. And you choose three units. Maybe it's more in the future as you buff it. You choose them. You perform a ritual. And it's going to give you a buff. Now, there can be epic blessings... Uh, in general, it's going to be things like gain a 20% HP shield or 10% lifesteal, stuff like that. And occasionally it'll give you an epic bonus on top of that. It starts off at 5% chance and you can actually upgrade that with the facility upgrades. It uses this Luxite energy, so eventually you can have more slots and you can buff more sets of people. A Relic, I only have one right now. Increase regeneration and maximum of the Luxite energy, which is used for the ritual. Uh, you can upgrade it. I haven't chosen to upgrade it because I got other things I'm doing with this these resources. Especially the gold. But in general, because you can only do this like once every three weeks or so. So it's not like super demanding. And these are the facility bonuses I've unlocked. So Blessing, cap up 15... A chance to receive Radiant Blessings up 5%. And Energy Recovery up 5 So that's where I've gotten it. And as you level it up and you get more facility upgrades, that's going to go up. Right there. And then your Ritual is going to take 20 Energy a week. So right now I'm not even near, nowhere near hitting my Energy Cap. But potentially when I unlock more, you know, that can happen. So good to have. Uh, use it on units that you know you're going to be using for at least two of the next three weeks, if not the next three weeks, because, um, you know, you don't want to just give them a blessing and then they're sitting on the bench or they're going and they're getting logging or good escort missions or something that, you know, you're not actively using them. You want them on units that you know you're going to use. Now, the Luxide Shop, this is where Barrel is. <laughs> and Barrel's actually quite funny in this mode. But essentially what's going on here, your tactics in this game, in Spiral in this mode, not your regular tactics from the other game, in this game, all come from Barrel. So she gives you quests every, I think it's about every month. You have four weeks to do them. So she'll give you a thing in tactics to use. You use it twice. She gives you currency. And she'll give you three random quests over here. Every time you turn them in, you get currency. Future Doc here, I forgot to mention that the ongoing quests usually require a certain character of a certain level type, so you always want to have a backup for every class, high level, if you can get it. Uh, it also involves significant stamina drain, so up to 90%, that character is going to be on the shelf for a while if you do these quests, so that's why you don't want to be using the characters you use for battle. Uh, the currency unlocks the research upgrades over here. Over here, if I want to upgrade this, it's this currency, Luxite Extract. And I want to level it. 
I'm gonna level it and then I'm gonna get the new the new upgraded effect, whatever it's gonna be. Eventually when you get to level five, it gives you branch option. You need a little bit more higher level materials that are pretty rare to get. As you can see, I reused all of them for other stuff. Um, but then you can choose, do you want 3,000 piercing damage or do you want 2,500 plus 30% of the target's HP? And you know, personally, I'd lean towards right, of course, because that's about the same damage anyways. And potentially, if it's someone with a butt ton of HP, it's going to be hitting harder. Likewise, but you upgrade these, eventually you get, uh, you see here, research level upgraded, which means you can now upgrade all these to level 7 and 8 and etc. every time. And then you get to choose every battle you go out, which one of these you want to take with you. It kind of RNGs the skills at first, but once you get them, you're stuck with them, so get used to them. Uh, I don't particularly like Summon Explosive Barrel, but it's not terrible, and I could see it being useful. Also target barrels with it. It is depending on how close your characters are to what you're targeting. I forget what the radius is, but I think it's something like 8 or 10. You gotta be, have a character at least cl that close, so you can't just snipe something on the other side of the map just because they're standing next to a barrel. But in general, that's the stuff you want to look out for. And then the rest of these, there's a defensive one here, basically. I shouldn't have taken that one either. <laughs> All offense, baby. And then, of course, your uh, tactical points. So, uh, initial, max, recovery. I say definitely focus initial and recovery. Get max after that, because you'll rarely hit max if you're doing it right. That's that. Really useful. Definitely level that up when you can. We will go back to the map now. So there's the forge. The forge, it serves two functions. Um, every week, although he's not here now, sometimes he's not here, but there's a merchant over here you can sell things to. So you got like 200 wood. I don't need 200 wood. Sell a bunch of it, get some gold and etc. You can sell gear there. Over here is forging. Forging is a little bit complicated. I think you start off with one slot. Uh, you get blueprints, so like, you'll start off with this blueprint early. It'll tell you what the materials are to make it. And then there's a preview here. So it could be epic gear. 10% chance. You can upgrade that with facility upgrades of percentage chances. But most of the time, it's going to be this lower tier gear. So you got to really be careful with this because your investment initially, especially early game in this, it, it's going to be hit or miss and mostly miss because of that 90% to 10%. As you keep going, you're gonna get, you know, the option to potentially get legendary items, but you need this other additional currency to increase the chance. So it doesn't always work out. There's also a more legendary specific thing, but once again, 10% chance. That you might get like bonuses that'll add like additional stat buffs and stuff to it. So, and then normal forging, you can just make regular gear. Pretty cheap, that's all you'll have early. If you just want to get your character's gear, I would potentially tell you don't focus on gear for a while. Honestly. Because you don't really need it early game, to be perfectly honest. It's great to have, but you can get it from drops out in the world. If you really want it. And then material forging... That is, um, if you need metal, you can just tell them to make 30 iron bars and it'll make it for you. So, if you ever run short on that, and that's pretty much this place. Occasionally there'll be quests here and people to talk to, but that's any location. Uh, the tavern is where you recruit in this game, and there can be legendaries, uh, there could be commons and everything in between. You come up to this dude, it refreshes... I think it's like every four weeks. Right now the pool isn't that great, but you come in here, you can read the character's skills. You see their classes. Depending on which factions you support, their faction characters will come in and start being available for you. So if you really need a certain character, you can come over here and get it. Hopefully, the ones you need. Um, definitely recommend on a new account. Try to recruit as many characters as you can within your budget. Don't go crazy. But there's a quest rewards on the uh, event quest that a lot of it ties into you recruiting five characters from this mode. So the quicker you can get that done, the better, the quicker you'll get to legendary gear for your other game. 
And then there's a little bit of storyline with like some of the NPCs over here. Just how it goes. Okay, so then a training ground. <clears throat> this is where you give your unit skills and you can get them bonus levels. So you come up here. Sometimes the shop vendors over here specific training things. So you want your character with more HP and blah, blah, blah. He has that manuscript or whatever. You buy it and now you have it. So you can do it. You come in this screen. It's going to cost you gold. So let's say I want to give Lash. Uh, you know, I can give... Actually, let me show it on like a lower character. Just so it makes more sense. So this character is only level 6. So I would do the XP training. Character makes it up pretty quick. I do have a bonus in that. That I purchased. But even without the bonus, he'll get to like at least high 20s. So if you need to get a, a good character levels, this is the way to do it right here. You can also give them skills. This is random though, so it's going to be RNG skills. If you're into RNG, you love rolling the dice, you love doing that, that's for you. Um, these are trailer trainings that you get through the story and through events and battles. Um, HP and healing effect, obviously really good on tanks. Good on everybody, honestly, but you know, you don't do you have the money and time to put on everybody. I've also gotten a couple other skills here, depending on what characters, like... This character, this is pretty cool for a DPS. Defeat an enemy, restore HP loss, gain attack up to 30%, last a round, so... Someone like a Cole who can kill three people in one round, and then that next round, 30% buffer. Oh boy, block dodge skills, block passive skills, and you can get all types of skills just going through the game. So that'll relate to different characters and obviously costs a pretty penny, but you know, you, you know, for sure, I'm going to get this skill on this character. There's none of the RNG because potentially you come over here, you know, you do the uh, RNG that's going to cost you 200. So, you know, you can play with it. It's not bad to play with, but you're not going to get specifically necessarily what you want, or you might roll the casino and get full house. That's the way that goes. But it's pretty cool. I like that. You can kind of tailor build your characters. Or you can go RNG route if you really want to. Uh, Town Square. If they don't have the vendor in any of the other places I told you about, the vendor will usually be here. And there's lots of storyline stuff that happens here. But you come over here. Like this merchant's here for three more weeks. There's a foraging bl blueprint. So I can spend 1800 and get that. It's legendary if I got the stuff to pull it off and I need it. Boom. Here's forge materials. Iron. Timber. Luxite dust. Luxite alloy. Here's an intermediate. You know, I can come over here and I can sell things if I really want to sell things. I need to get money. This will show all your facility upgrades for your buildings. If you ever want to look at what you got so you can judge. Okay, I got this bonus. I can take a bit more of a chance. I got that 10% bonus so we can roll the dice. I'm feeling it this time, you know. That's what Town Square does. Uh, Leader's Office, that's why I showed you in the beginning of the video where you initiate all the fights and stuff. Haven is very important because your characters need to rest after burning energy. Uh, you can see here I've upgraded mine so that there's an additional rest spot. And it also recovers 5% more energy. Like I said, every battle, 10% of your energy on these characters. It shows them here. 40% uh, of your energy. You can also sword however you want. 40% uh, energy lost if you use them and they die during the mission. Also, there are certain things that Barrel's quests require to where they will give you, they will take stamina from you, but you need a character of a certain unit and a certain level, and it'll get you that currency to upgrade your tactics. So you got to bring them here, because now, oh, Dispatch also takes usually 10% uh, per, so I'm going to bring here, you see, I can rest them up back to 100, and this dude's here for the week. Now you can come back, you can take them out if you realize, oh, I need that character for this fight. Usually during critical battles, you can use any character you want anyways, but during your weekly quest, you got to use according to the energy. So it's always good to have your characters as close to 100 as possible. Um, there is also, you can go with the negative energy, so they got to spend a couple weeks here at that point. Because it's going to take a while for them to get back into fighting shape. If anyone's ever had zero energy or below, you just can't use them for anything. 
you're going to come over here. You're going to do the weekly fight. You're going to set up your dispatches. Dispatches will go for a while till those people run out of energy. So you come over here. In this case, we got two fights this week because there's an event battle and there's a quest. I'm not going to go through them because, you know, it's just your regular battle. Normal stuff. There's nothing crazy that different about the other mode. So you come here, you do suburban battle. You do wipeout or whichever battle you want to do. And then once you're done with that, you come back down here and it's going to say next week. And you wrapped up everything in the town. Boom, you go to the next week. The story keeps going. And you got a week's worth of resources coming in, a week's worth of expenses, units resting, uh, people doing escorts, people mining, etc. And you get all that income. Everything that happens in the story happens. And then you, you handle the next week and you just keep going. So... And this mode, it lasts for a while. I'm already in the week 40s. I'm sure it probably goes into week 50 something. Not sure how long a run is. There's up to six different endings in this mode. So if you like it, you'll be playing it for a while. So that's your that's your coverage for Spiral Destinies. Uh, I've actually really enjoyed it. As you keep going through it, you're going to get stronger. Your characters in the real world are going to get stronger. So when you eventually come back for the second round and the third round, this doesn't cost any energy, so it's always something to do. If you run out of energy in the other world, you're sick of the other world, come over here. Play it. Okay, cool. I'm doing my RNG roguelike stuff. This is amazing. This is fun. I don't have to worry about summoning. I don't have to worry about, you know, whaling, paying money to get things to go faster. No. I just come over here and I play, and there's good story, great factions, great characters. Build your own town. All of us love doing that type of stuff. Resource. A uh, roguelike get get stuff going quicker get stuff going better because there's mistakes you can make in this and things will be screwed so as far as it goes i don't think it necessarily ends your run but you may have to like pay a price and you take a you take a l for the week and you get a bunch more negatives so anyhow that's it i hope you all enjoyed this spiral destiny guide Yo, I'm Showtime Doctor, Showtime DR. You found my YouTube. Congratulations. Support your boy. Give me a like and a sub. Also, I'll be putting out tons of Sword of Convalaria content. Uh, just stay tuned, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. <laughs>